Okay, so uh, welcome back to the Live Large uh, Blogs episodes that we've been uh, putting out. I think we're up to like 13 or 14 now. Uh, shout out to everybody that's taken part so far. Um, too many to mention, too many to remember if I'm being quite honest <laughs> at this point. Uh, but I appreciate you all. Uh, today we are with, um, I'm going to say, a long time friend. Been a while still. Uh, yeah, a long time. 10, 12, 15, 15 plus me. Uh, introduce yourself. Gavin, Gavin Cameron. Mr. Gavin Cameron on the socials as well. Mr. Um, Gavin Cameron. Yeah, man. Um, Co founder and uh, managing director of Carbine Guru. That's me. We'll get to that. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, I know over the last 15 years. Yeah. that your journey hasn't been that simple to get to where you are today. No, not at all. Not at all. So let's start at the beginning. Right. Yeah, yeah. Where'd you grow up? I grew up in Harrow. Um, I was born in Chalk Hill Estate, which was what it was. It was, it was what it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly yeah. Yeah, what it is. What they're trying to, trying to get away from. Um, born into a family um, of two girls, and then I was a boy, I was the youngest. Being a boy growing up in Chalk Hill weren't sensible, so my parents both being born in Jamaica, immigrants and over here, said they needed to leave and they did. They moved to Harrow, where I grew up when I was three, um, from three till the age of, I think I was 20, um, when I left Harrow for the first time. Um, just went to school, college. What was that like? Was like school was like, it was all right. I was shy though, I was like, I was one of the shy ones, yeah. do you know what I mean? But I always was around yeah, people. I never guessed that. This is the thing, so people think yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah. not, I'm actually, people that really like, my family would tell you, growing up especially, I was like, I was a shy one. Yeah. I'd go to like family functions and not even move from the seat. You get hold me? a corner. Yeah, I'd just hold a corner, yeah. like, serious. And it was the same in school really, I weren't one of the ones that was like, what you may have thought from how I moved when I come to Derby and people may think knowing me now, living in the West Midlands. I was just the, the shy. Didn't really take to education too tough, if yeah. I'm honest. I got through it, kind of got myself into uni somehow, and that's where we met. That's how yeah. I ended up in Derby. So, so when you was going through the education system, mm. did you ever feel like you was uh, encouraged to to do the best by the system? Nah, no, no, no. Well, put it this way: we had like business studies um, was one of the subjects I took as a GCSE, and a business studies teacher had no encouragement for me yeah. at all and now I run my own business. I don't even think he ever ran his own business when he was teaching my oh, business. Okay. Do you get what I'm saying? Um, there was no encouragement, there was no... Yeah, it was, I, I can't think of any teacher I had throughout all the years I went through education that really pushed tried you, to push me to do something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe <laughs> one actually, you know, in primary school. So actually, See, that's, that's with me, the same thing with me. It was like primary school, like secondary school. No, oh, no, no, I forget it. It was like, yeah, you go to jail, basically. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You know I mean? so, it was like, I mean, that's the thing. So my parents moved to Harrow to get away from all the badness. But right. if you go to Harrow today, it's just full of badness. Yeah. And it slowly seeped in when I got into like secondary school. You could just see it coming. And people I went to school with, a lot of them went to jail. Yeah. Um, and not even because they were bad kids, but they just... Just certain not guided, yeah, 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 exactly, and that's how that's how it is. So, you got into uni. Do you ever think you, you had it in you to like, actually get into university? Was that put in you by your parents? That something that nah. you had to do? Or I'll tell you a story. I don't think I've ever told you. I don't know if you remember my, my friend Dwayne. Yeah. Do you remember Dwayne? Yeah, yeah. Tall, tall, yeah. Dwayne Lynch. We got Dwayne. He. I went to his house one day. He used to live around the corner from me. I was there chilling with him in his bedroom, just chatting and that. And he goes, oh. I'm going to Derby Uni, you know, I'm doing this course, you should come. Yeah. Like, all right, cool. I swear that was I never came to Derby until the day I moved in. So I had all my worldly possessions in it, like 20 years old, I think. Yeah, 20 I'd have been, because it was 03. And packed up with my brother, I had a TT at the time. So that shows how much stuff I had. Yeah, it could fit me yeah. him, and all my worldly possessions in the TT. We drove up and it was like, Got to like Northampton, like, rah, this is kind of far. Then got past Northampton, it was just like Birmingham, I was like, rah, still not there yet. And then I start seeing fields and cows, and, and then it seeped into what I've actually signed up for. It was, yeah. like, it was a bit crazy, but yeah, man, I, it was random, random. But I'd still say it was the best decision I ever made. I don't think I'd be, well, I would definitely wouldn't be sitting here with you if I never yeah. had that um, impulsive 
decision that day. Well, that was a good decision. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes cool. when, when and it must have been at the time, right, somebody that you trusted to say, listen, this is what I'm doing. Because if you didn't trust him, you would, you would never have got on that bandwagon. Dwayne was proper, like, he, yeah. he's, and I, I don't really see him or see him that often, speak to him that often now, but he was proper, and he's still proper with how he uh, conducts himself on yeah. social media and all the rest of it. So, yeah, I knew I weren't following an idiot. Yeah, if yeah. that makes sense, do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I knew it was, sure. a, it was a smart person that I was following, and yeah, man. So what did you sign up for? I did, um, what did I sign up for? It was an access course I did, so it was like a, a post-grad course or something, I can't remember. The same course as him. He told me what course it was, he told me to respect to some, yeah, come to see this. Pick your own course. Because imagine like I was going to a dance. <laughs> it's like he asked me to come to a dance with him, that's what it was like, dude, I swear to God. And um, I was checked, he was like, yeah, yeah, this looks good, signed up for it, right? That's me. Even with the how we'll come on to it, but how the business was set up. That's yeah. me. Like you give me an idea or it sounds and it it gets the right side of me to think, you know what, this could work, I'm gone, I'm doing it. And that's what it was before. Okay, so you've done the access course and uh hey, was that a year? It was a year, yeah. And then obviously you would have to make a choice after that. Yeah, yeah. For the yeah. next three. But it's kinda of, it was kind of formatted, so like I said, I did business studies at at school. Yeah. Obviously had like liked it because I'm still in into business now. Yeah, I was right. always into business, um, and there was a business course. It was access to a business. Right. Okay. Course. Okay. So, yeah. um, business management. It was access to. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Sick. Like, I was gonna say it again. That is like the, the most random access to, to uni that I've heard so far. Yeah, man. Every, like, anybody, everyone laughs when I say that. Anybody else that comes on it, on this can beat that. <laughs> so gonna be a big one. You know what I mean? So you're in Derby, and. I, I remember you from just a bar. Really. That's the thing, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Just a bar and being no, in a... No one was going to do that. I was trying to think of when I met you. I don't actually no. know when I met you. Just, I just, I just, just in the right see. spot, so yeah. it was in the right place at the right time. And, and obviously clicked because yeah. later on down the line, we uh, we managed some artists yeah, together. Yeah, so. yeah, we did a lot. And I mean, even before that, I'll be honest with you, like, I've found that I never, I never had no real talent, like, artist or anything like that I think my talent was just being able to connect with people mm. and even with what you what I came to Derby and end up doing started actually in um, at home when my friend I went to college in Watford a friend of mine at the time started doing events so he was doing like under 18 raves yeah so the first rave he had was like um, when more fire was just popping with oil when it was still underground yeah, yeah, yeah. and he had more fire on the bill and I said to him like I want a DJ and he said no, I said to him, let me play at your rave. And I were these are all MCs, innit? Yeah. And I was a bit like, I had, I had the S curl and all the rest of it. Right? So he laughed at me and was like, what are you going to do? You're going to sing? I was like, no, 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 let me DJ. He goes, all right, you can do the warm up, whatever. But I had no records. <laughs> I went and brought a couple of records and that, went and DJed and that. And then like, within four weeks, I was playing on Freeze FM. Yeah. That night I played with Lethal B. I was on the same bill as Lethal B. I went on to play at the first Eskimo dance. I went on to like work with, on the same bill as people. So I didn't even you DJ. Exactly, well, that's the thing. So it was just something I tried, I did, and I got, I, I did well. Like from, I'd say from 2001 to 2003, maybe a bit earlier, yeah. I had a good run. I was on some big names, um, big events, sorry. Like, like I said, first Eskimo, Wiley, done a DJ set with me, had Heartless on, on the set with me. All from just asking a question about yeah, myself yeah. out there, you get me? So when it comes to Derby and I got here, it was kind of the same thing. So we, Derby was a bit dead, like I'll be honest with you. We come here as students and think about it, I've just come from DJing at Eskimo Dance yeah. to Derby where exactly. as a student, there's nothing, well that's the thing, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. you weren't hearing none of the music I was used to. And like a couple of my boys who are like now good friends of mine, we were all linked up at uni, all these London boys were like, what's going on? Everyone was complaining, but I was just like, you know what? We just go dance. Do and we held a dance in our student halls and kind of just went on from there. I just kept on doing stuff and yeah. I just got about. So your name started ringing out across the uh, in uni, across yeah. the fields and yeah, yeah, yeah. Bypassing the cows and thing and <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You're putting on dances now, so yeah. You've come to uni on a whim. Mm. Let's have it. Let's, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. And then you, you've. Not only done that, and then you just said, well, let's, let's just do something. And it was literally, it was me, I remember me and my, uh, my friend Dane, um, Serbos, he was sat in, his, in, in the halls, 
we lived in like the one we lived in is called Lumsdale. It was like the ghetto. It was it was the slums compared yeah. to the others. Yeah. Because again, I just wherever. Yeah, as long as I got a bed, I'm cool. That was my <laughs> attitude back then. I can't be like that though. We got kids with that. You yeah. know what I mean? But back then, it was just I just ended up in the slums. But I just remember saying to him, "Let's let's hold the dance," and we did. And that was, the rest was history, really. Okay. So fast forward, we we linked up. Yeah. Uh, and started working with uh, Alex Blood, uh, Vigilant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Swift Eight Nine. Yeah. And the other two just fell to to meet 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 my mind right now. But yeah, yeah, yeah. We did that for a bit. I had a bit of a success when we was working together. Uh, got I to think we had like a bit more than a bit. And then I look back at it. And for what we achieved was pretty special, I think, compared to how the game is now. Yeah, it's changed. Because you got, think about, we had, we'd like put albums out. There's an album out there with like our names as executive producers. Yeah. If, if we have it right, do you know what I mean? And being in the studio with people like Baby J was, for me, was a, was pretty special because, I, like I said, I come from London, I didn't know these people. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I had no business being around these people. There was no other students around these people. So it was a, them, that period there was a very proud, Probably yeah, it was, it was a good time, do you know what I mean? It didn't end as how we wanted it to end, no, but I think it's a t- we, we, it's timing. That, that close to... Yeah, it was timing more than anything. Yeah, I think if it had been two years previous, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then we, that third year we would have been yeah. Yeah, on a tour bus somewhere. Like, <laughs> well, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, 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 I'll give you a second. But yeah, anyway, so <coughs> that was done, uh, and then you just, you just went. So yeah, it's just like no leaving party, no no goodbyes. It was another whim, innit? it? Nah, it wasn't even. You know, I I I, I kind of wish it was in a in a weird sense. So um, my dad had cancer. He okay. was terminally ill for like two years, and that's the thing with me being how I am. A lot of the times when we're making moves and doing what we were doing, you still had that on, on, on back of your my mind. My dad's dying, bro. Yeah. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Like he 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 died. We we was told like three three years prior, I think, to him actually passing that he was gonna. Like, my, my sister phoned me and said, look. Dad ain't gonna be here much longer, sort of thing. Yeah. But three years on, he was still there. So in 08, this, no, December 2007 is when I left Derby. And I, my plan was to go back home and just be with him. And then he died like three, four weeks after I left yeah. Derby. And it was just like, what now? Yeah, it's done. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's done. Um, li- life was a bit mad. I mean, obviously, you. you, you oh, yeah, that's like very well. so, yeah. so I was, I was like 24. Do you know what I mean? And he was the foundation, so I'm going back to London. I knew I had my dad's house to go to and yeah. all the rest of it. So yeah, Derby was a bit. I put it in my rear view that, at that point. Yeah. But I ended up coming back though. I did end up coming yeah, back for a, a little piece. piece. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's that's why it probably felt like I just cut out because I kind of had to. Well, do you know what? When you explain it like that, I can't even hold a grudge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, I was like, oh, I'm CG. I can't see him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know where he is, and, and so, yeah. but it makes sense because when you when you lose someone very close to you like yeah, that, yeah. he's my he's my, yeah. my hero, man. You have to do what you have to do. That's what I'm yeah. saying. And, and family situation was all crazy. And I went back for I was there, only there for a year though, saying that. Um, and that's when I started managing J Wall. I don't know if you remember the singer yeah. J Wall. So I was trying to keep the management thing going. That that fire was still burning inside. You're better than me, bro, because after, after the, <laughs> yeah. the last episode that we had together, I, I vowed I'd never do it again. Well, this is the thing. So that was the episode of me, me vowed that I'd never do it again yeah. with him because we had great success. We like, obviously we had the music with Rich Rue too, and I'm going into these studios with these big names and playing on one extra and all this stuff. But I think what made me more proud of that moment was the fact I was, I've taken so much of what I learned being around yourself Alex, Baby J, and yeah. I understood the game. Yeah, yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? I, well, I'm, we learned it together. To that's what I'm fair. saying. But I think I, I kind of just sat there and was just watching all of you lot because you was a bit more, um, you you was a bit more further ahead in the game for me when we were working on, yeah. on big man management. So I was just sitting there learning everything, and it was proud, proud moment to be able to make stuff happen. But again, it went left timing. I don't think I was destined to be in the music business. I don't know what would happen. I would have probably gone. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Something bad would have happened to me if I if I stayed in the game and it was like it is now and I made all that money and all the rest of it. Yeah. So, so yeah, so then I come back to Derby for a bit, um, and then that's when I met my my kid's mom. Good. And ended up after about a year, I think, of um, being back in Derby, I ended up moving to the West Midlands, which is where I'm at now. Okay. So 
So you packed up your bags, rear view mirror, Derby's out, out the window. For good this time, yeah, yeah. Met, met a, a nice young lady, yeah. and man's ready to settle down and get on to the next venture. So, yeah, kind of, yeah. How, how did this come about? What's this the next venture? Or, or nah, so, you remember we did um, Blush? Yeah. The comedy shows? Yeah, yeah. So that was, um, again, just an event that one of my guys said, let's bring Richard Blackwood up here. Yeah, I remember that. It was a good event still. Yeah, we, we Blush killed it, bro. Yeah. And again, and what the reason why I think I'm doing so well with the current business is that things like Blush, the management game, etc., was that I always gave up. Yeah. I gave up too soon. With Blush, I gave up a little bit too soon. Um, and But then I went to Birmingham and it was like, I ended up, again, just networking like I did in Derby, and I ended up with working with one of the biggest promoters in Birmingham yeah. for a London-based brand called LOL. And we put a show in and we had like Broad Street on lock every yeah. Sunday for a good little run. Yeah. Me and the guy that owned the brand we had a bit of a falling out and I was wounded because that was my thing. Like yeah. I was thought I was back in the comedy thing, eventually yeah. was going to be my thing, second biggest city in the country. Do you know what I mean? I've left like with all due respect, Little Derby and I'm now, I'm not yeah. quite in London, but I'm yeah. Doing my thing Big in Birmingham, yeah. do you know what I mean? And and then my little boy was born like around that time as well, and money needed to be made and all the rest of it. And I just gave up on everything. There was no venture. It was just about working. Yeah. Um, and one of the maddest things. So obviously, um, a quick story. I one of the things that made me realize I need to do something was that when we recorded the song with Retro Two, when I was managing Jay Will. The day he come to record it, you remember like distribution, how the CD yeah. thing was. Yeah. He was on the phone, like vexed with his distributor. Okay. Because his first album, Retrospective, weren't in the, um, the HMV. Okay. So I remember saying to him, randomly, I don't know why I said to him, you come off the phone like, like don't worry about it, bro. Like, when you when you bust, everyone's going to come listen to you. But he had no, like, Rex weren't expected to blow up. Yeah. he come from nowhere, basically. Um, and he looked at me like he wanted to cuss me. Yeah. Yeah. That, or he was just shocked that I thought I had yeah, that much faith in his, or, or his skills. To say that, yeah, because this was when he was like not doing very well for himself, basically. But then fast forward to when I'm in Birmingham now, LOL's flopping or whatever. Well, for me, it's flopping. And I'm sat in this office selling adverts for the newspaper, and it was like this middle aged white woman was singing the hook to Don't Go, to Rex Free Too. And I'm looking at her like, wow, like it's yeah, mad. Yeah, yeah, it's working. He was right. Exactly yeah. what I said to him. Yeah. And this was like three or three or four years later. Do you mm. see what I'm saying? But the difference between me and him was that he stuck at it. Yeah. yeah. So I vowed to myself that next thing I do, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick it. Tuck in. And then I left there, went and worked for a company um, called Trust Ford. They're now called Trust Ford, selling cars over the phone. Was told by people there that I'd do well in a dealership, so I went and sold cars in a dealership. Um, got promoted pretty quickly to business manager, um, which is where I learned about car finance. Right. Done that for about four years, won awards like for making, they call it a ton of money. As a dealership, we made like 2.4 million net profit. As a department, the department I was running, we made a million net profit. And it's some little deal, well not a little dealership, but it's just a four dealership in, yeah. in Wolverhampton. Um, and yeah, I've just seen, I need to get out. I was, getting, I was getting very good money, making very good money. People, I was seeing people I went to uni with, like scholars, because I didn't finish uni. Okay. I didn't finish, I, I, I just weren't on it. Mm. Probably because I weren't meant to be there. I just I was <laughs> treated like a dance. Um, but yeah, I just met, I was seeing like scholars at uni, people that were proper in their books, struggling. But I, because I worked, I remember I worked in the O2 shop and I was mm. always yeah, doing yeah, stuff. Yeah, I got a couple of phones up here back in the day. So I'm saying, yeah, so I was always doing stuff. So when it comes to the, um, when it comes to the post uni situation, I found myself in a position where I was making more money than if I'd gone through the system and graduated. Okay. See what I'm saying? Um, but I wanted to cut out, it just weren't right for me. Mm. And then my business like my business partner guy that I found the company with one day said to me, Oh, I lease cars, like you you're doing you're doing cars, why aren't you going to lease it? He don't know me, like I'm a bit crazy at this point. <laughs> yeah. I went home and um Googled it, like done my search. Two weeks later, I phoned him like, yeah, I set up a leasing company. He's like, what? I was like, yeah, I set up a leasing company. Like, let's go, sort of thing. And that's where it, like, it was called One Call Vehicle Leasing and then we rebranded it. It was part of a franchise. We scrapped the franchise and started our own brand now. Yeah. Um, doing car finance because what I was finding that people didn't know what they were doing when they were buying cars. All the knowledge I had wasn't common knowledge. Do you know what I mean? 
people don't understand PCPs, HPs, leases, what's best for their personal situation, yeah. how dealers can rip you off. You know what I mean? And the the um, morals in me weren't really playing to the way that. That's why I couldn't sell cars, bro. Yeah. You're okay, did you try it? It did it for a year, bro. It's... When I left the gate house, I sold cars for one year. You, that would have been a while ago as well. Bro. It was really car, yeah. bad. Yeah, it's a, it's a dirty game. It's horrible, bro. But I just saw it. I saw it. I couldn't in do it. it. I couldn't do it because, like, you having kids coming in, like, saved up like five grand and they want to buy a Saxo. Yeah. Saxo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like to modify them. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. So that when it's when they're dumped, it's never going to be worth what it was anyway. Yeah, yeah. Throwing away money. So it's hard to talk selling, about our deals. We're selling finance, mm. so it's even worse. I remember a girl come to me and she brought a car off me and she bought another one a little while later. And about a year later, she said to me, oh, I need your help because um, she's got an IVA. I was like, wow, what do you mean IVA? Like, your credit was good. Like, what's yeah. going on? She goes, she goes, Gavin, I think I've got a, a spending it, um, issue. She kept on buying stuff, buying stuff for yeah. no reason. But the thing is, she was on a PCP, which meant that by the time her contract ended and she had to hand the car back, she would have been stuffed because yeah. she can't get a new um, finance agreement once the IVA kicked in. So I, I just, I done something. It weren't illegal, it was very much above board, yeah. but there was no profit in it. It was no benefit to the business. Right. And I just thought, you know what? I can make money helping people yeah, like her right. not get into that situation, yeah, you see yeah. what I'm saying? And that's what, that's what End Car Buying Guru's grown, grown into now. And so how long has it been going? Three years on the 31st of March. Wow. Yeah, so we're two weeks, well, whenever this comes out, 31st of March, 2020 will mark three years since I stepped out of my, my paid job, so. And it's been hard, bro. And yeah, it's not easy. easy. It's been hard. Setting up a business is not easy. And that's the thing people don't realize. I didn't realize. Well, I didn't when I started this yeah. whole clothing business. Yeah. And, um, I just, I cut, I went to the, I went to the island and burnt the boat is what I said. Cause I, I, I just quit the job. Do you know what I mean? Gave back the company car, gave up the money and all the rest of it. Uh, my son, my kid's mum, she had a car, gave that back and just started from scratch. Mm. People thought I was crazy. They seriously like people I work with. You're a little bit mad though, isn't it, bro? Huh? You're a little bit mad. A little bit. Yeah. You have to be because it won't be you. <laughs> it's like, true. If you're going through your whole story, like from from being moved out, out, out of my comfort zone, into oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, over yeah. to Harrow, and then one day turning up in, in Derby, the first time you've ever signed up for uni, <laughs> and just turning up on the day. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you say, like. Going but you know what it is? Road. My thing is, you can't really. I don't let nothing hold me back. I don't really let. You ain't got no boundaries, fam. Yeah, mm. yeah you don't really. That sounds bad. No, it's not a bad thing. <laughs> like, not having, having that fear of, of, of failure. You don't yeah. have that. Do you know what it is? I do. No, but you don't. I don't, I don't but I make the you fear don't work stop for you. me. You don't yeah, stop I make you. the fear work for yeah. me. And it's interesting you say it. I was having this conversation with someone yesterday. Like, you got to make, for me, you got to make fear work for you. Like, I can't fail in this now because my son's watching me. He's yeah. eight years old. Yeah. He's got my YouTube channel on his, on his, um, YouTube, you subscribe basically yeah, to yeah, dad's yeah. YouTube channel. Yeah. He don't see me go to work every day, do you know what I mean? I'm showing him something. My, my godson, who's 15 in a couple of days, I, I promised him that he, because he, he's not doing well in school basically. Mm. He's not for the system, a bit like me, but he's he's doing, um, he's going even more left than I did. And um, I promised him an apprenticeship when he turns 16 if he yeah. just sticks at it and he just yeah. behaves himself. You see what I'm saying? So it's like I'm applying more pressure. That like, failure is not an option. And I don't allow failure. I don't think about failure, I don't mm. think. It don't even cross my mind at the point of starting. It's Very when, driven. It's when I'm halfway through, it's like, right. I'm here now. Yeah, yeah. If I can't yeah. fail now. Yeah. I, I, jump in, I jump in and I'm like, oh shit, like, what if I fail? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's a bit, it's a bit mad. But that, 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 that um, lack of fear is, is, is what drives you to be who you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For real. Well, like you're saying, you're taking that, that negative energy in and making a positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are many people out there that do that. Uh, it's like when we started this company, uh, three years of talking, mm. three years of talking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, trying to plan. You can't plan for this. Yeah, it's like, can't. See, that's the certain, thing. There's only a certain amount of planning you can do, I should say. And that's the thing, cause I, I'm i around people and I, that want to talk about doing business. You remember my guy Martin? Yeah. That was it. I'm seeing him on Saturday. He's, he's, he's good, man. I'm seeing him on Saturday. Yeah, Martin, yeah. yeah. Martin, I know he don't like me to a certain extent because I just, what are you doing? Yeah. What, what are we thinking about? Like, just get, get if we're going to do something, boom, let's do it. Yeah, and if, yeah. it, if it don't work out, it don't work. The amount of things like music management, promotion, dances, mm. comedy, 
Do you know what I mean? I've done a bag of things and a lot of them haven't worked out, but for me, you've got to just keep trying and trying and trying. Until so is this out. your figure? This is me, man. Yeah, this is me, I think. Because of the way social media is, because of the way the world is, and like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much an introvert. Yeah. So I don't think you remember, or you might not remember, but when we had Blush, I think we had a fourth birthday party. He was DJ, and I remember in the bar, that new bar they had, well, it was new at the time in the yeah. uni. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Was it one? Was it one? It was it's one. They changed the name a couple yeah. of times. But we killed it. Like we we had the best attendance in that bar. That at that point, fourth birthday party, place is full. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Everyone's there, and they they got all the promoters up, without telling me with a birthday cake to sing happy birthday. Yeah. And I didn't. They I, they trying to call me up. I've sat in the crowd watching them call me. I weren't on it. I weren't trying to be that in the phase. spotlight. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. way, the way social media is now, I've, I've, I've had to get over myself in that sense mm. and learn how to be an extrovert and be a bit more out there. And that's, that's the persona I've got now. Yeah, the car buying guru, the, the, okay. the car finance guy, the person that, um, that knows about car finance. And that's, that's where I'm at with it. So, what, what, what's, so the business has been going three years in March. Mm. Uh, so, Random question, but how much car? Oh, how much finance? How many people have you put in cars? I think the question. Do you know what? I don't even know. I, I don't even know. I'd say hundred. I'd say yeah. At least um, bearing in mind it's just me one doing it. Like so, everything from start to finish. Um, we're talking brand new cars. Like I think the most expensive car has been close to a hundred grand. Okay. Value. Um, like on a range sport, um, so yeah, we're doing, we're doing, we're doing pretty well. I say, if I was to put a number on it, I'd say around at least ten a month on average. So about three hundred and sixty cars, I'd say. Okay. But now we're building a team, so I'm trying to have it in a way that we've got to start off with. We've got six guys starting this month in total, so it's going to be six of me potentially, and just trying to level up and scale up. Okay. What so offices and, and take it? I've got a unit. I've got okay. a unit, yeah, an office and that, okay. um, based in Cannock in the West Midlands. Um, everyone works remotely, uh, buy the cars in. So yeah, man, it's we're gonna grow, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. don't well, fam. You know what I mean? It's like I like to see my people like take the next step and appreciate that, bro. And I know it's genuine coming through. You're one of the realest ones. No, it's, it's you know what? It's like even like when we start this whole thing. And, it was originally going to be about us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Not anybody else's company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are we promoting other people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we're trying to sell our, our own garments. And yeah, we yeah, barely, yeah. really speak about what we do. Mm. No, Because it's a bigger picture. And it's like when we, when we spoke last week about, or well, about a month ago, we saying like to get you on and that. Mm. It's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because no, I, I, I know where you, I know part of your history and, and like, way, and it, it's funny for, for someone from, who started? Who I know for music, yeah, and and comedy, yeah, 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 uh, to be arranging car finance, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know it's just, I mean? do you know what it is though? The car is just a, and excuse the pun, it's just a vehicle to do what I what I do, yeah. And the two things I've always loved doing, which I did with the music and even with the comedy, was like helping people and connecting the dots. So like a lot of like one some of my proudest things was, um, for instance. Um, Melissa was saying that uh, they no DJ Firestar had a one extra, um, not one extra Asia Network guest show thing a couple of weeks back, and he played Hustle every day okay. with Def One and Ruckus. Yeah, I was shocked that he played that. Mm. What shocked me even more was that she was singing the song. Okay, and what the reason why is because I knew Def. Yeah, and when them lot were up here saying, "Oh, we need a rapper from London. We should get a rapper." Who should, I said Def One and then yeah, that's yeah. how Def come to yeah, Derby. Yeah, yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I remember that. So yeah. that's always been my thing. Yeah. And that's exactly what I do with the finance. Like I find the right, I'm just connecting dots and helping people and oh. making people feel good. Like with the with the comedy thing, it was yeah. just connecting dots and making making stuff happen. That's so good, man. It's all, it's all the same thing. Genuinely, like, really, like, impressed with, with where you've come to, where, where you are now. I appreciate it, my guys. Yeah, you know I mean, it's like, the, the road has been long and obviously there's been bumps and massive oh bro it's been like the beginning there was there was months when i just weren't making any money mm. straight up and down that's, that's what i say i say to anyone if just you gotta just keep going like, i've got a friend of mine um 
you know, I'm, uh, he's, he's a nice at the moment. And I would always say to him, just keep going. Mm. And he laughed. He said, you always say that. It's the truth. It's important. Though, that's it? the formula. It's important that those people hear that. Yeah, that's the formula. You so is that going. the one message that... Yeah, 100%. If you're sitting down there and, and you're watching this and you're planning on starting a venture, whether it's clothing, food... Uh, anything. Finance. Anything. Events. The message is just to keep pushing. Keep going. Because there's been many things I've done. And trust me, if I just stuck at certain things, I would have been in a different lane. But I feel like everything for a reason and mm. this one is just what like just keep going just just you believe yeah man yeah you have to believe i can't yourself. stop i can't stop no. i've got extra i've got extra reason to keep going now as well yeah, so you gotta find your way yeah exactly my my, my kids depending on me now do you know and that's why we do this because it's it's in my day job I, I come across kids and young people that haven't got the ambition or haven't got got the know-how or i haven't got like just a, a direction it. yeah they just don't to, see it though to That's even that. Because I remember when I was, I, and I've said this before, when I, was, when, I was, when I was a kid and I was in primary school, and this one teacher, she, she was saying to me, Miss Pereira, I remember after the day, she said to me, oh, Andrew, what do you want to be when you grow up? Mm. I was like, I want to be a fireman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, I ask kids that, that question nowadays, and like, what? Yeah. Like they're, they're not even thinking about tomorrow. Yeah. Just trying to get home to play Fortnite or whatever. Yeah. It's a bit mad. But yeah, you know, you have to set examples, and that's what, that's one of the biggest things that um, I've tried doing. And you know what, with all you lot, yourself, I know you've been doing what you're doing for a while. Baby J and Ruckus especially. Like Ruckus for me was one of the best at just getting young people together mm. and doing big mm. things. So that's why, for me, Derby's like a second home for me, you get me? Yeah, yeah. 100%. Sure. Well, I call it home now, so. Yeah, like, I'd say, I, Derby's more home for me than, than where I live now. Yeah. Put it that way. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's more, more my people up here and all the rest of it. And, Big you lot, man. Let's keep doing no, bro, team. Big you up, Big you up. Uh, so, six guys starting soon. Uh, unit sorted out. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we're gonna have to catch up again. When you're ready, man. When you're ready, just you can even come down and see what's going on or whatever. Oh, that sounds like a plan. Yeah. Well, like, yeah. When you're ready. That part two going on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just let people know, like, if they want to, uh, if they're renewing cars or changing cars or yeah. need that advice or. Where to all go. of that so yeah if you if you obviously if you want to buy a car that's lovely but even if you're just looking for car advice um car buying guru uk that's on um instagram follow us on twitter facebook uh what else car buying uk is the website if you want to speak to me directly as well um probably best on instagram instagram uh, mr gavin cameron and that's about it yeah all my info is on Simple. there so click the link in the bio i've got i've got ebook out some yeah. car advice on there on my okay. Instagram. So Mr. Gavin Cameron, click the link in there. Podcast, car finance expert podcast. I've got bits in there, man. So this, this is what this is what we give them the podcast uh, details because on Spotify, so just search, if you search Mr. Gavin Cameron on Spotify, it should all come up. Okay. But um or Apple Music or Apple Podcast, sorry, or Anchor. Anchor's probably the best place, and it link you to whatever one you you got on your phone. Um, car finance expert podcast. And how did you do it podcast as well, which is... How many followers you got, fam? I got about 1,600. I ain't going crazy on my personal one. Yeah. And then about eight, eight and a half on the business one. Dude, all right, mate. Trying That's what we're right. aspiring to get to. So you see <laughs> this, subscribe to what we're doing. Because yeah, we man, need those subscribe. numbers to keep to keep this going. And hopefully at some point, someone will come in and, and scoop us up and say, like, there, we love it like that. Yeah. You know, for a bag of dough it. It's not about that, really. But... We do need your need the ambition your, need your there, subscribe, though. you know. We need you to subscribe to to what we're doing, and yeah. go back and check the other pod, uh, the the other videos. There's uh, DJs, producers, uh, fitness instructors, uh, kickboxers, yeah. uh, illustrators. Speak like we're trying to get around as many people that are doing these things, so that you can have the knowledge or have an insight uh, to your own dreams. Because we have to learn from someone. Why not learn from the people that are doing it? Actually doing it, yeah, yeah. So that's the message. And we salute you. And please click the button, subscribe, send it to your friends. I've got my YouTube as well. Sorry, Carl Bain Guru UK. Nah, man. He's had his chance to do that now. (laughs) He's had that. So this is about us now. So, no, Carl Bain Guru. They got it anyway. Yeah, 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 they don't know what you're doing. (laughs) So appreciate you. And then we'll catch you on the next one.